Well, good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Earlier today, I was at the Supreme Court to hear Chief Justice Roberts issue the decision on the Affordable Care Act. And while we respect the court, we respectfully disagree with the decision. Just because the court upheld the law as, con uh, as constitutional does not mean it is a good law. In fact, it's a terrible law. Unprecedented government power, fundamentally changing the relationship between the individual and government. And in fact, Chief Justice Roberts acknowledged that. The court ruled today that in fact, the Affordable Care Act is a tax. It is the largest tax in America's history. We also know that CBO has estimated that up to 20 million Americans will lose their employer health insurance. It makes it harder for small businesses to hire. And as a mom and a wife making health care decisions like many families in America, we've already seen our premiums skyrocket, on average $2,100 per family. For all of these reasons and more, the American people oppose this bill. In fact, the opposition has increased since the, the law was signed two years ago. That's why the Republicans pledged to America to repeal this law. And we are more determined today than ever to repeal this law. The Supreme Court spoke today, but they won't have the final word. The American people will have the final word in November. I'm Nan Hayworth from the Hudson Valley of New York, and I am a physician myself. I'm an ophthalmologist, and I had the privilege of caring for patients in the Hudson Valley for 16 years. And I'm here to represent patients and doctors across the country. My colleagues tell me that they are very concerned about their ability to deliver the care that their patients deserve and that they have come rightly to expect under the terms of this law. In particular, I'm worried about Medicare patients. As an ophthalmologist, you can imagine, I took care of many of them in my career. This law, this 2010 law, takes half a trillion dollars out of Medicare. This directly compromises their access to care. It is unacceptable. We are resolved here to honor the goals of that law, which were the right goals, to have good, affordable health care for all Americans, affordable, portable health insurance, the wrong law. We cannot afford to impose a $2 trillion dollar bureaucracy on the American people, and we can honor those goals in ways that make sense. We are here to put patients at the center of health care, patients, their doctors, their providers at the center of health care, and not the federal government. And Kathy is exactly right. We are more determined than ever, and we will succeed. Hello, Renee Elmers from North Carolina representing the 2nd District. Yesterday I said a new chapter will be written for health care as a result of the Supreme Court decision. It isn't the chapter I was expecting, but it is one that we will continue in the fight. I came to Washington because of Obamacare as a nurse and with my husband as a surgeon who is actually here in Washington now. We knew we had to fight against this for health care. As a mother, I'm concerned about our children. As a nurse, I'm concerned about our seniors. This keeps, this decision keeps in place $500 billion being cut out of health care for Medicare for our seniors. And it also continues the independent payment advisory board, which will be 15 bureaucratic, unaccountable, individuals who will make health care decisions for our seniors and for our citizens. The fight continues. The uncertainty remains. And the vision that has kept me awake so many times at night as a nurse, seeing myself holding the hand of a patient while the doctor comes into the room and says that their life-saving treatment will be denied because the Independent Payment Advisory Board deems it unnecessary, remains in my mind. We are and will remain committed to this. We will repeal Obamacare, and this will continue to be our fight. And then the chapter for reform with efficient, accountable, responsible health care reform will be put in place. Thank you.
Thank you and good afternoon. I'm Ann Marie Burkle from New York's 25th Congressional District. While the court ruled that this is a constitutional law, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good policy. I'm a registered nurse and uh, since then a, a healthcare attorney. I've been in healthcare for over well, most of my professional life. So healthcare to me is, is intensely personal, but also of, uh, it's, it's just I'm very passionate about it. Throughout the course of the last 18 months, I have had my hospitals, my physicians, I have had senior citizens, I have had nurses come to me and say, this law is bad, it is going to bankrupt us, it is going to affect the way we are able to provide care for our patients. So it may be constitutional, but it's not good policy. And as legislators, our primary goal needs to be enact laws that do what's best for the American people that make sure that they have access to health care, that we do everything in our power to keep the cost of health care down. This law doesn't talk about tort reform. This law doesn't take any of the necessary steps to really reform the cost of health care in this nation. The president continues to say that if you like your health care, you can keep it. Well, I'm here to tell you, I hear from my, the folks in the district all the time, from my physicians, from, from hospitals, the concern that that's not, gonna, that's not gonna be what happens. So many people and employers are gonna put their, their employees into the exchange and they will lose their choice for healthcare in the United States of America. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable as legislators and it should be unacceptable for the American people. So as, uh, as was mentioned, today begins the fight. Today begins another debate. Today begins the true debate on how we are going to reform health care in the United States of America. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. The president's health care law is hurting our economy. It's driving up health care costs. It's making it harder for small businesses to hire new workers. And I think today's ruling underscores the urgency of repealing this harmful law uh, in its entirety. What Americans want is a common sense, step-by-step -step approach to health care reform uh, that will protect Americans' access to the care that they need from the doctor they choose at a lower cost. And Republicans stand ready to work with a president who will listen to the American people and not repeat the mistakes uh, that gave our country this harmful law. Listen, health care coverage that has become too expensive for too many people in our country. The number one concern for families and small business people uh, is the cost of health insurance. And the Republican health care reforms will, in fact, lower health care costs. As Kathy pointed out, women make uh, about 80% of the health care uh, decisions uh, for their families in our country. And Republican health care reforms will ensure that families and doctors uh, make health care decisions and not bureaucrats here in Washington. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> if for nothing else, today's health care decision underscores the importance of this election. The people of America are going to have a choice to make in November, and clearly it's a choice that uh, will bear upon the direction of this country as far as our health care is concerned. The decision today really indicates we have entered an age in which the government, Washington, will be controlling health care unless something changes. Most Americans, I believe, still, still like the health care that they have. And the president has continued to say that his law will allow folks to keep the health care they like. But what we've seen is that's just not the case. Obamacare will preclude people from having the health care that they like. We have seen this law increase cost, and we are committed to changing that. We are committed to making sure that we can return to patient-based health care in this country, where we can keep costs low and we can increase access. And that's why when we return the week of July 9th, I've scheduled a vote for total repeal of the Obamacare bill to occur on Wednesday, July 11th. And in that way, we can clear the way towards trying to, again, focus on accomplishing a health care future that is premised upon patient-centered care, lowering costs, and affording better access. 
Today's decision by the Supreme Court did nothing to end the debate in America on health care. It only enhanced it. The decision raises the question, to be very clear, is the patient going to have the decision-making process or are you going to have a form of a government-run health care? It's a debate that will drive this House, drive this nation. But the debate of health care goes much deeper than just the ability for the access and the cost. In a time when America has faced 40 months of unemployment above 8 percent, unfortunately, I'm very fearful of the discussions I've had with small business owners that the decision today is going to determine decisions they make in jobs. But the economy won't be turning around because this health care bill actually harms the economy. Their own studies by administration shows that it will take people off their current health care plans that they have. It will raise the cost. So the debate has not ended. The debate has only begun. You see a group of individuals behind us that won't be the only ones, but I believe across this nation it's going to be a healthy debate, one that's on policy, and we look forward to working with those individuals and also listening to the nation to solve health care that actually empowers the patient to make their own decisions. Today was not a good day for freedom. It was not a good day for struggling American families who wish to keep the health care that they have. Uh, I respect the ruling of the Supreme Court, and I respectfully and vehemently disagree with it. For those who have concluded, though, that it is constitutional, I remind them, a constitutional law does not make for a wise law. The trillion-dollar deficits of the Obama administration are clearly constitutional. They are not wise. So the fight will continue. We believe the president's health care law still fundamentally is hurting our economy and hurting jobs. Every day I hear from some small businessman in the 5th District of Texas that I represent. One tells me they'll never hire more than 50 people. Another tells me they've already spent $350,000 in compliance costs and had to lay off six workers. The law weighs in at almost $2 trillion, $800 billion of taxes. Family of four premiums up $2,200. The Affordable Care Act has not proven so affordable for struggling families, for taxpayers, much less a dwindling federal treasury. But most importantly, Americans want to be able to choose their own doctor. They want quality health care. They want access to health care. They want portable health care at a cost they can afford. The president's health care threatens that. So the Supreme Court was heard today, and we respect them. But as the Republican leader said, the second week of July, the People's House will be heard from and ultimately the people in America will be heard from. This decision today by the Supreme Court was clearly a troubling decision. Uh, we behind us and within our conference clearly disagree with that decision. But as Chief Justice Roberts says, it's not the role of the court to protect the people from their political decisions. And uh, the people clearly chose in 2008 and we are now as a nation living under the consequences of that political choice. But as a physician, I can tell you that the doctors and the patients of this land are very troubled because this law, just like yesterday, it's no, it's, it hasn't changed today, uh, violates every single principle that we hold dear as a nation in health care, whether it's accessibility or affordability or high-quality care or choices for patients. This law violates all of those things and make them, makes them more difficult, which is why each one of us has said, in one way or another, uh, we will work together with our conference and with the American people to make certain that this law is repealed and that we move forward in a logical, rational, deliberate way with patient-centered health care, which means patients and families and doctors making medical decisions, not government. If you'd like to ask a question, all you have to do is raise your hand. Wait, no, we're not. Anybody wants to yell? Ensure that I don't call on you. Chad.
you don't agree with the policy. But isn't there some consistency there? It's just because you don't like the policy. That's the decision of the court. How are these things in conjunction? Well, no, the court makes a decision about whether uh, this law is constitutional. It doesn't mean that the, the law is wise. It doesn't mean that the law is good for the country. I give you an example. You look through uh, uh, the decision today, and, uh, and the Chief Justice, in his, uh, uh, in his opinion, outlines the fact that, uh, uh, that the Commerce Clause, trying to expand on the Commerce Clause, is not constitutional. Uh, but because it's a tax, uh, that uh, that it can proceed because uh, uh, the Congress has the ability to impose taxes. So uh, we could, uh, the government could decide that we're going to tax you uh, if you uh, don't eat broccoli on Tuesday. Apparently, that's not constitutional, but I don't think it's a very wise law. Did you ban no, I said <laughs> no. Um, All you have to do is raise your hand. No words required. You know, I think uh, uh, the real outcome of the, today's decision uh, is to strengthen our resolve to make sure that this law is, in fact, repealed. And we're going to work every single day uh, between now and Election Day, uh, and the American people then will get an opportunity to make their decision uh, on Election Day uh, because uh, elections have consequences. And the election in 2008 clearly had a consequence uh, that most Americans disagree with. Uh, when you apply the Chief Justice Roberts between the Supreme Court and the more liberal members of the court, do you feel that that's beneficial? Uh, I'm uh, blessed that I'm not a lawyer. Uh, and so uh, I'm, it's not, uh, not for me to decide. Uh, the court, uh, the, while I'm disappointed in their decision, they came to a decision. I respect it. Resolve. There's a lot of resolve amongst our colleagues and amongst the American people uh, to stop a law that's hurting our economy, uh, driving up the cost of health care, and making it more difficult for employers to hire new workers. Uh, the American people want this bill. Uh, they want it repealed. What they really want are common sense steps uh, that will empower them and their families to choose the doctor they want at lower cost. We'll, we'll let uh, we'll let the American people make uh, the American people will make that evident on election day. Are you a politician? Do you you think it's going to help mitigate your your state's shortage? What I'm concerned about is a law uh, that's driving up the cost of health care and making it harder for employers to hire people. That's what I'm concerned about. Given the recommendations in the House and the given that uh, the current Congress does not have any chance to uh, bring a tax revival to the Senate side. Uh, would the House just plan to repeal that penalty or is something else in mind um, not to the end of penalty for failing to, uh, to pay that penalty? Well, we believe that repealing this entire law uh, is the right thing to do. Uh, it'll help our economy. It'll help bring down health care costs. Uh, it'll save uh, Medicare from being uh, cut by $500 billion. And instead, we can put in place common sense steps that really will help the American people have better access to the quality care that they want. Thanks, everybody.